Welcome to a new video. In the last episode, you would have seen us building all the front half of the roll cage for my Mark V Escort, and it has come out pretty damn good, if I don't mind saying so myself. But we do still need to take all that out, clean it all up, and weld it in properly. That is only just tack welded in there for the minute. So if you missed that video, go and check it out. We've got a whole playlist on this car as well. So if you're new to the channel, go and have a look, bring yourself up to speed. But we are not here for that car. We are here for the latest victim, which is my E36 Coupe. I have bought this thing solely just to nick parts from to go in the Escort. So we need all the front end, all the suspension components, steering column, etc. And we also need all the rear end, subframe, diff, etc, etc. But what we need to do is not only take all that stuff off, but when we put it on stands, we need to level this car off because I also want to make a jig off of it as well. So once everything's out of the way, I'll then make a jig picking up on all the suspension components, which we can later transfer onto the Escort to make sure everything's in the right place. So yeah, it comes with its uh, hurdle, shall we say. Now, if you're a long time subscriber, you'll know that I've already bought an E39 rear end for this. However, after sort of measuring up and sort of getting a bit better a lay on the land, it worked out it's going to be a little bit too wide for the Escort. So. If anyone wants an E39 rear end, hit me up. There's one sitting there from a 535i. Now, why have I gone for an E36? That is simply because the aftermarket support is absolutely nuts for these things and they actually handle pretty well. So that is why we've ended up with what we've ended up with. <laughs> now this thing is ropey as all hell, but thankfully I do have a buyer for the shell. So please don't message me asking if the shell's available because it isn't. Someone is already coming to pick this up once I've done what I need to do with it. Which brings us to, I need to actually start doing something with this. So let's pop you on a tripod. We'll get this thing leveled up on some jack stands and get some spanners and sockets and whatnot out. Start taking this thing apart. Look out, we've only gone and found some adjustable rear arms in this thing. What a result that is. That's almost as good as finding some money in a jacket you ain't worn for ages. But that is now the car leveled off, believe it or not. It don't really look like it. It looks like the front's higher than the back, but no, it is actually level, as you would have just seen. So now we need to take these wheels off and begin dismantling probably the back end first, because I don't like the idea of taking the front end off and then all the weights on the back and it suddenly decides it wants to tip down. So yeah, that wouldn't be a good time if it decides to fall off the jack stand now, would it? So wheels off, take the back end off first, and then we'll move on to the front end shortly. we have gone for some YouTube magic and leaped ahead 24 hours. So the last thing you would have seen was me taking off these wheels. However, once I'd done that, I had actually found it is all rather dirty and crusty underneath here. So I proceeded to spray everything that I need to touch with WD-40. So I've done the brake lines where I need to disconnect them. 
all the rear trailing arm bolts and all the rear subframe bolts as well. So fingers crossed, now that all that's had 24 hours to soak, I shouldn't have any dramas getting any of these out. With any luck, fingers are tightly crossed. <laughs> but yeah, so what we need to do is undo three bolts on the rear trailing arms, two bolts on the rear shock, which are just inside the boot, and then four bolts on the rear subframe. So all in all, about 14 bolts, disconnect the brakes, and we should be good to drop all of this out, in theory. Unless there's something that I've missed, which I'm hoping there is. <laughs> so fingers crossed this will go well. Now on the, on the back of these, it's got a separate spring to shock. So what I'm gonna do is actually change that to either a true coilover, or I have been looking at a load of stuff to do with cantilever and pushrod suspension lately. So I might delve into that on the old Escort. I don't know yet. We'll have to see what happens on that front. But essentially we're all ready to go with this thing now. So I think there's nothing left to do other than get underneath there and start unbolting some stuff. So you'll have to bear with me. Obviously, I don't have the luxury of a ramp in here, and I don't have the luxury of having very good lights either, so I'll do my best. Hopefully, I can show you everything I'm doing, but if not, bear with, and we'll get on to something else very soon, so. It's time to get underneath here and get showered in a load of dirt and rust. Lucky me. <laughs> just wanna pack up my things and go. Just wanna be free, just wanna zone. Just wanna flow, just wanna hang with the gang, but sometimes chill on my own. Just wanna do me, just wanna doze. Just wanna live and see how it goes. And the goals just keep on going, yeah. This life we live is a roll. When there's love in the rave, you know. When there's love in the rave, you know. All inside you, all in the soul, 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 soul. You know when the calling's calling you, when the calling's calling more. You know when the calling's calling you, it's calling, calling more. More, 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 more. You know when the calling's calling more. You know when the calling's calling. When the calling's calling Yes, we are making moves in the right direction, people. So the steering column is bolted in with these things. 
Now, as you would have seen, I started taking apart all of that bloody dashboard, and it turns out you don't need to, because what you do is basically smash these, and these undo the steering column. Now, I got halfway through stripping the dash and thought, well, this can't be right. <laughs> so I looked on YouTube, as you do, for a video on how to remove one of these, and sure enough, plenty of videos come up showing you how to smash these things out. So, lesson learned there. But what we have also got is the big chunks of bits that we need for my car. So we've got the entire back end here and we've got the entire front end as well. So what we need to do now is make a jig off the BMW, which is gonna pick up on all of these mounting points for all of this back end and all of the front end. So we need four points for the rear subframe. We need a point for the front trailing arm. However, on the trailing arm, this bracket is actually too wide for the Escort. So from this point to the point on the other end is too wide. So I'm gonna to have to do away with the brackets and figure out a way of mounting these trailing arms directly to my tube chassis. So I'm sure we'll figure that out at some point. And then last but not least, we need a point for the rear shock as well. So we'll get to making a jig on that in a minute. But I think what we're gonna do is start with making a jig for the front first, because this one's gonna probably be the easiest one to do. So we need to, again, make a jig to pick up on these two points on each side point for these here and a point for the front shocks as well so all in all the front should actually be quite easy i'm hoping <laughs> the back however is going to be a little bit more tricky so we'll start with the front knock that out what we've got for that is a bit of 25 by 50 rectangle box and a bit of 20 by 20 square box as well so we'll make something to go across from uh, chassis leg to chassis leg, and then that will go from there down to where the little lollipop mounts go and triangulate everything. And then last but not least, we'll have to make something from that where it comes through into the wheel arch here and go up to pick up on the suspension points. So all in all, hopefully we should make a jig that will pinpoint exactly where things need to be made to suit the Escort. So let's get on with it. Let's start making some stuff. Thank you. 
And here we have phase one of this front jig then folks. So what I've done is put two bits of rectangle box mounted to the chassis legs, like that. I've then got another bit of rectangle box welded to those and they come through into the wheel wells here. So I can then go off of that straight up to the bottom of the suspension turret there where we need to make a plate to bolt that into the suspension turret. And then the lollipop mounts are all nicely triangulated into this main structure here. So that side of things is all done and dusted. Now I'm not going to win any awards for the welding or the cutting of these bits and pieces. As long as they're nice and uh, strong and they hold, I can give monkeys. <laughs> this car has got to go at 12 p.m. tomorrow afternoon and it is already half past nine. So we've got to, a lot to do this evening and very little time to do it. So the next step is gonna be sorting out from that jig to the top of the suspension turrets. So what I've also done off camera is found the center of my wheel arch here using obviously a ruler and a carpenter square as well. So that is the dead center of this wheel arch. Now that in relation to the strut top lands about here so it turns out the struts are actually leaned back a little bit in comparison to the center mark of the wheel arch so i need to translate all of that into the escort at some point but i think what we need to do now is attach this to a plate that's going to be bolted up there and then we can work on something to come off of this come up and pick up on our center point there ready to move that all over now obviously i can't do this on the other side because i don't have a wing on the other side so when it comes to doing all this in the car, I'm going to make sure the car is dead square on the table and then I can just take measurements from the table to the car and everything will work out lovely. So all in all, we've got a lot, to, a lot of work to do, little time to do it and we need to start by somehow cutting out some round plates.
Well, they're not very neat, folks, but we have two plates. I thought I'd bust out John's little plasma cutter for this, and my God, it has gone through that three mil plate like it was nothing. I mean, it's not very neat, obviously, but that would have taken me so long with a grinder, it is unreal. I think the tips on this are knackered though. I think I'm gonna have to get some new tips on that. The arc was just flying out in any which direction it likes, but I wouldn't mind having a bit more practice on this thing. I reckon that'd be a good tool to sort of master a little bit more. So yeah, needless to say, these things are dead hot now, so I need to let them cool down. We'll clean off all the slag, drill some holes in them, and we've pretty much got some suspension top plates at that point. So leave it with me, I'll pick you guys back up when we're ready to move on. We've got reinforcements running away. <laughs> Darren's in to help me do this back end of the car. We've now got our suspension top plate ready to go. All drilled out and whatnot. Not very round, but what can you do? Not very good with the plasma cutter. Lob them in, weld them in, get this front end buttoned up. Then, folks it is well basically five to five on a Sunday morning and I am absolutely done this is pretty much the front jig finished off I just need to do a bit more triangulating on this side here just to support this uh, little piece that I put in to give us a center line on the front arch but overall that is done it is nice and sturdy it's pretty damn rigid so yeah, all in all, we can call it done on that, but I've had to take that out in order to use the bolts to get onto the back, because like a numpty, I didn't buy enough nuts and bolts the other day, so I've had to use the ones from the front. But this is all the back end done as well. I had to admit defeat with the filming and just knuckle down and get on because the time was pushing on. So apologies for missing out all this bit, but this is the rear done. Again, found my center point on the rear arch and put something in for a reference there as well this is heavily triangulated as you can see it picks up on the suspension point just up there it picks up on all the subframe mounting points underneath here as well 
Now I have made absolutely no effort whatsoever to make these welds look pretty or any part of it look pretty. So you'll have to excuse the dodgy welds, but it is there to serve a purpose and it certainly does just that. And last but not least, I have actually picked up on the rear trailing arms as well. So all in all, we are done. I am absolutely knackered and I need to go home and go to bed because in a few hours, I've got someone coming down to pick this thing up and I still need to try and get it out of the workshop somehow. So I'll pick you guys back up next time I'm down here and once I've actually had some sleep. <laughs> See you then. And just like that, folks, we are back. What a night that was. I have had a week off to recover from that. I had two nights, one doing this and one doing a strip down on a Ford Transit. So yeah, two all-nighters. Oh, I was absolutely trashed all week. So I had a bit of time off, but what we are left with is all of this mess. So needless to say, this is all the front end stuff. So this is my jig for the front. This basically mirrors all the mounting points from the front end of the BMW. So we've got suspension tops, cross member, subframe, whatever you want to call it. And then the mounts here for the rear lollipops. These bits here are the only thing I'm not too sure on how I'm going to connect to my tube chassis. Because you've got two weird little mounting points there. So how I'm going to connect them into my tube chassis, I'm not too sure of at the moment. But if you've got any ideas on how I could possibly go about doing that, let us know. I'm kind of thinking maybe do away with the lollipop mounts and just do a bit of tube with a poly bush or something in it that this will then slip into. I don't know. But like I say, if you've got any ideas, let us know. I'm keen to hear them. But that is essentially all of the front end jig done. And this piece here just centers off all of this to the center of my wheel arch. So all in all, that one's ready to rock and roll. The back one, as you can see, is quite elaborate. There is bits of metal going in every which direction on this, and that is to keep it absolutely solid. So what we've got on here is rear trailing arm mount, suspension mount, and then the subframe mount, all on these four points here. So that mirrors all of the rear end off the BMW. So the only thing with this rear end that I can see being a potential problem is the rear trailing arm mounts because these are actually quite a bit wider than my Escort. So I think I'm gonna have to get creative with them. Again, that is the only thing on the back that I'm unsure of at the moment, but I'm sure once we lay all this in place, it'll all sort of make itself a bit clearer, you know? So yeah, all in all, we've got everything we need here. What we need to do now is actually cut some more of my car apart so we need to cut out all of this back end all of the inner wheel arch tubs all of the boot floor lose all of that so we can pop that in and I also want to put this car right down on the table I need to sit all of my perimeter boxing on the table square it all off and then I'm probably actually just gonna tack the car to the table just so it can't move anywhere but in order to do that as you can see there and there, and then the same again on the other side, the original chassis rails actually sit down further than essentially my new chassis rail. So I need to cut a bit out of the front as well. And then after we've done that, we should be able to sit the entire car down on the table, measure it all out, make sure it's all square and weld it to the table. So that is gonna be the next plan. Cut a bit out of there, cut a bit out of there. Now I have had a few questions about engines and whatnot and what we are going to use our weapon of choice is the good old trusty k20 this is a k20 a4 so it's not the best of the bunch but it will do us for the time being i mean i picked this up for 50 pounds so i mean for 50 pounds i'm just going to send it and see what we can get out of this thing strap a turbo to it and hope for the best <laughs> So yeah, hopefully we'll make 350, 400 horsepower. I don't know, but I think that'll be more than enough for an Escort. So anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get inside the car, start cutting this thing up.
blimey that was harder than I thought it was going to be considering how rot this car is so that is the front now cleared out but for those of you that own a Mark 5 or Mark 6 Escort all this rust goes pretty deep people so if you've got any rust going on with the outside part of this panel where the subframe mounts in expect it to look something like that on the inside it's not good that goes right the way through typically I ended up cutting straight through the center of one of the subframe mounting points so that is what's that that's the driver's side and then passenger side is just as bad as well so I am so glad that I've chosen to do this after all and not try and repair all the floor in this because yeah that rock goes real deep so yeah but having a look at the car that is what you're faced with on these front corners where all these Mark 5 and Mark 6, Mark 6 Escorts all rust out so if you own one and you've got a bit of rust there I really do feel for you because that is not going to be a fun time repairing that right let's get on to the back I think I might need to call my uh, my trusty old ripsaw that thing is doing some work forget that I've got this thing but my god I wish I'd started with that in the first place that absolutely sailed through this and needless to say we are done we have got all the back end out this is all again nice and crusty and horrible so yeah I'm, I'm not sad about having to deal with this it's uh, well past you all of the chassis rails on the back there are completely toast as well so yeah all in all it would have been a lot of work trying to repair this thing so I'm happy it's ended up like this to be honest <laughs> but we have now got a whole ton of space in the back that we need to fill with that BMW rear end but I'm going to call time on this episode folks I think what I'll do is clean up all of that get this car set on the table off camera and I'll pick you guys back up for the next episode where we will be trying to make that fit in the car 
and trying to get some tube work to it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode and hopefully you hang around for the next one. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time. Peace.